But yeah, yeah, dude, it has been a while, uh, a, a few weeks in the making, trying to yeah, finally try and get it going. And uh, dude, I'm excited because uh, I know when we hung out the first time, we um, we connected on a producer level, which was really dope. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, talked about a lot of different things, and uh, so today we finally have him in person. Lico, that's my producer name. I, my name's Alex. Um, I like making beats. You know. Right now, that's not my full-time job. I try to make it my full-time job. Um, as a side hustle, I sell beats and create content. You know, help producers out. If you don't know how to make beats, you know, come check out the channel. I'll teach you how to make beats. You don't just make content. You make wild content. Like, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. I try to put my personality into <laughs> yeah. it a little bit. I noticed that because right when I met you, it, it was like the same thing. Because I've, I've, I've been watching your stuff online. Ah, I appreciate sudden, it. Like, I appreciate it. Cause I saw, I followed you. I don't know how we found each other. We we just saw each other on. Yeah, we must have connected before. Cause I was gonna say I always see you pop up on my IG, and I've always seen some of the podcasts that you do. Cause I see you do the snippets. Yeah. And I've always been curious. I was like, how do I know him? Cause it's it, you have the DMV thing. Like I knew you were from the DMV, but I didn't know how we knew each other. So yeah. it's cool that we just randomly met in the club. Yeah, your friend actually, and he's like, um, it was funny because he was trying to, he was kind of gatekeeping you. <laughs> he was gatekeeping <laughs> yeah, the producer. He's like you got to be cool, man. And I was like, what are you talking about? He's, he's the producer. Like, of course we're gonna be. It actually, actually it's, it's pretty, pretty awesome. awesome. I, think I think you're one, one of the first, first producers, producers on, on the, the producer, producer pod. pod. Officially, I think. Let's go. The, uh, the, do you also do singing? Uh, I don't I, I'm not an artist in any sense I mean I'll like I can like freestyle and stuff but mm -hmm. just for fun like I don't ever record myself yeah okay so then you are the official because I know John Clark he also produces his stuff uh, he was on the podcast like a few um, episodes ago gotcha and he's a really dope artist and but that's what he leads as so this is I'm, we're finally gonna have like a producer to producer conversation yes sir yes sir so I'm, I'm excited because there's a lot that we even touched on when we met like like the big names you work with and and Absolutely. like uh, uh, some of your accolades i guess just like shout them out just to kind of like let people know like who you've worked with so far right right so right now i think my biggest clientele for the area is primarily just local artists in the area local dmv artists and you know just being in this area everybody and their mother is a rapper so <laughs> i'm here to supply them with beats but also on the studio end of things i've been getting my name out there by collaborating with some other producers one of the biggest producers i've collaborated with recently is uh, he goes by the name Jonas Lee, and he works with a lot of these bigger artists in, out in Atlanta, like um, artists like Young Nudie, uh, Lil Got It, people like that. And so what I've found personally for me is to get my name into the industry because I'm just a producer in my bedroom. Mm -hmm. So what I've found, the best way to get my name out there in the industry is sending loops. So when I make a beat, I'll start with the melody, you know, I'll make the melody from scratch. I can play the keyboard a little bit mm -hmm. i would by no means say i'm a pianist like i really? never i never grew up musically like trained or anything mm -hmm. i just watch youtube videos and learn how to mess around in scales and stuff so what i do with that i'll like make a loop and then i'll make a beat to it but you know i can't go to an industry producer and be like bro i made a beat send it to this artist so i provide i try to provide value as a producer and if i'm if i see this person has bigger connects than me because right now i mean my biggest platform is my content creation, mm -hmm. which is good. And and, you on know, Twitch. Yeah, on Twitch, I live stream, I do all that. Mm -hmm. And that's that's my biggest platform. But, you know, a lot of people that are watching producers on YouTube, they're trying to learn things. Um, a lot of the industry producers, they're just working with artists. And I'm kind of trying to do both at the time. So all the people with the bigger connections, what I found works best for me is I will take those melodies the stems of the melodies that i make for the beat and rather than send them the beat i'll just send them a whole bunch of melodies mm, i'll send them oh, like okay. 10 melodies a week and what i found from that is i'll get so like i have a couple snippets with uh uh little got it young nudie there's actually a song with um young nudie and sexy red i don't know if you know the girl there's uh i'm trying to think of one of her songs um you know the song ski yeah that i actually right after like a, a, a pump i'll do like a rep i'll be like i mean after a whole set I'm yeah like, ski. Like, yeah it's like, yeah. like a just a funny thing because i'm just like letting out all the tension ski. yeah yeah that is the most <laughs> that is i swear that's a spiritual that's a spiritual <laughs> quote for real so yeah yeah like, like you were saying you know you don't always have to you know get something from somebody uh i was in miami just you know miami trip with one of my friends and we were out there um, and we were at this place called Club Live. It's like at this hotel called the Farm Blue. It's like a really like luxurious place, whatever. And um, I went to the bathroom 
I had like the turtleneck on and I had this fake ass gold chain, like <laughs> very obvious, like it's big fake gold chain. <laughs> yeah. I like it. I wasn't trying to convince anybody. It was like very fake. It was just part of the, you know, part of the look. So I, I had this fake gold chain on and I was like in the bathroom. I was like fixing my collar. And I remembered when we had walked in initially, my friend was like, yo, look at Richard Branson. Like that's what me and my boy do. Like we'll just point out people and be like, he looks like that person. He's like, yo, look at Richard Branson over there. Yeah. And we like looked at him. I was like, oh shit. Like we started geeking. It was, it was funny. So I was in the bathroom and I'm like messing with my turtle neck, trying to make sure that the chain show in the right way. And I like, you know, you can see reflections in the mirror and there's a guy next to me washing his hands. And he has like this really nice black suit on, like nice slim fit, like, like suit. You know, he didn't have any like jewelry on, like looking crazy, but you could tell that it was a nice tailored suit. And I just like was looking in the mirror, like fixing my thing. And I made eye contact with him through the mirror. He looked at me and I was like, I just, if I make eye contact with somebody, I always just say, what's up? I was like, I was like, what's good? And he's like, what's not good? And I was like, everything's good. I'm in (laughs) Miami. I'm in, I'm about to go to Club Live. See Rick Ross. Like I'm living life. I have nothing to be upset about. And he's like, you know what? That's the thing that a lot of people don't understand. A lot of people don't know how to appreciate things. And just like, just genuinely, that's something that I value a lot. Like just all throughout my life, I've always been somebody that values like little shit. Like even today, like I'll just go on a walk and I'll just look at the sky because I'm like, damn, bro, that shit's so blue. Like I just, I just like stupid stuff, and I've always liked that. So when he said that, we started going into this in depth conversation, like just about gratitude mm. and appreciation for just being alive. And it was just a jet. We were talking for like 15, 20 minutes, just literally outside of this club, just chopping it up. Eventually this dude, just a random dude comes up and he's like, yo, Richard, is that you? And he's like, please, not right now. Like, I'm just chilling. Mm. And he's like, he's like, oh, bro, I love you. I love you. Da, 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 da. Mm. You're the man. And just walks away. And we continue our conversation. He pulls out his phone and he's like, look, I actually have this app on my phone. And it like reminds me every five minutes, just something to appreciate you know take a deeper breath or enjoy and i was like oh bro that's really cool like i really like that Mm. and i just had this whole conversation with him long story short he ended up talking to me he's like uh he's like he's like come to the bar he's like i'm right over there he's like we can grab a drink and hang out and me being a dumbass i was just like bro rick ross is playing and i already got tickets (laughs) i was like bro like i would love to but you know, I got people in the Rick Ross concert. He's like, oh, you're going to see Rick Ross. I was like, yeah, I'm going to see Rick Ross. He's like, well, you're going to enjoy yourself. He's really good. And I was like, yeah, I hope so. I was like, well, it was really nice meeting you. It was nice talking to you. He's like, nice talking to you, too. He's like, I, re- I hope you enjoy yourself. And I had this whole, like, 20, 25-minute conversation just talking to Richard Branson. This is the, one of the richest men on the entire planet. Yeah. And we were just chopping it up. And the first thing, like, I told my parents about it when I came back, and they're older, obviously, so they're huge fans of Richard Branson. They saw his whole, like, virgin, like, come up, and they were like, what? You were just sitting there talking to Richard Branson? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, it was the most naturally flowing conversation ever, and one of my friends, he's uh, his name's Andrew, he's a huge fan of Richard Branson. The first thing he says to me when I saw him in person, he's like, bro, you met Richard Branson, and you didn't ask him for any money? I'm like, bro, I'm like, bro, you lame as fuck, because yeah, he would not have sat there and talked to you yeah. if you said <laughs> and shit like that but it was just you know it and i'm glad that i didn't ask him for because i a million dollars to him him is nothing, nothing. Yeah. it's nothing like he he could feel bad for somebody and give them a million dollars but i think the thing the thing that i'm most appreciative of that whole conversation is that he viewed me i viewed him as nothing more than a human being and he viewed me the exact same way mm. he i wanted to hear what he had to say i wanted to hear what was on his mind and he wanted to hear what was on my mind because i'm sure all day every day all he does is meet people that are either trying to present business Mm -hmm. deals to him or you know get money from him get something from him and it was nice just to speak and have open dialogue with somebody who's very successful but the entire conversation had nothing to do with either of where we came from our success level nothing other than the fact that we're two human beings communicating and, yeah. I, and, and to this day, I'll, I'll always remember that just because I was like, dang, like, it's cool that, you, you know, you can just talk to yeah. people like that. Dang, you you, uh, you gave up a, conversa- a, a drink with, with, <laughs> with Richard Branson for, for Rick Ross, for bro. Rick Ross. And the, the biggest, the biggest sham of the whole thing, Rick Ross got in that joint. He was 
he's a fat ass dude. He's so fat. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, he's the biggest boss. Whoa. Yeah, yeah, he's the biggest boss. And he was in there. He was so fat and so drunk. He didn't even perform. He didn't oh. sing a single song. They were just playing his. He was. It was cool still. Like he was walking around with all these big chains. Johnny Dang was there, and they were getting drunk. Johnny Dang was like yelling at hoes. I was like, I, I, it was a lot going on, but it was like, it wasn't a performance. It was just like he showed up, threw some money, and then he left. Mm. And I was like, bro, we could have went and hung out with Richard Branson, yeah. right? Dang, those are those are amazing moments um, that you'll never forget. And and it's like, um, it, it's a great reminder that that you're. That you guys are all just in in this journey. Of yeah, life we're all just equal, and, bro. Like, all right, yeah, he got a billion, trillion, quadrillion dollars. Yeah. But at the end of the day, bro, whatever is in here, we all got the same mm. shit. And the fact that you didn't recognize him probably really helped you because. Well, I, I, kind of when I when I first saw him, I didn't recognize him. Like, I just thought he was a fresh looking old dude. And then we started talking, and the more and more I looked at him, I was like. <laughs> I was like, I, I was like, you know, in denial in my head. I'm like, nah, this is not Richard Branson. And then the dude came up and he's like, yo, Richard. Oh, I was yeah. like, oh shit, this is Richard mm -hmm. Branson. Yeah, because I think they value just our organic conversations at that point because they just get bombarded by you. You never know people's intentions and they all right. want something from you. It's like at that level, you really do have to look at like that. You need to have uh, reminders of what you appreciate. Yeah, like I need to be appreciative of this and this because. Just imagine living in that kind of like soul sucking environment. No, you can't even go outside. That's that's one of the things that I've always like. I love going on walks and just like looking at stuff. I don't know why. I just lo I just love doing that. It like helps inspire me. It just helps me. Just you know, just makes me happy. And I always think like, you know, it would be so cool to be famous, whatever. It'd be mm. super cool to be well known by everybody. But also at the same time, when you have that level of fame or that level mm. of um need like people need you you don't have that luxury you can't mm. just go outside and walk around and i think that's my favorite thing in the whole world is just walk around that outside freedom. yeah just yeah. do whatever yeah that's the downside i don't think um honestly there's a little bit of a, a pessimistic cloud ever since uh it was just a few weeks ago i saw this video that I, I've been kind of thinking now the, the music industry is over. and uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think I've seen something like that. Yeah, I've seen something and, like uh, that. And so, like, in the back of my head, I'm like, you know what? You know, it was fun while it lasted. And I'm, I'm glad that I, I didn't get, like, extremely famous where I wouldn't be able to show my face where people would be like, oh, this is, you know, uh, a one-hit wonder. This, you know, like, yeah. back in the day when we used to listen to human-made music, this guy used to be big, you know? Right. Like, I still would love for people to know my name for, for my music and, and, and everything like that. And I was, I'm doing the podcast. So I'm like, obviously there's brand that is attached to your name. Right. In exactly. General, so it's, it's nice to, to have it mean something mm -hmm. to people. Um, but at the same time, like, I don't know if you've seen the videos with the AI, um, like how much, how far it's really come. Have you seen something like Suno AI? Oh yeah. You yeah. Know yeah. It. It's done. It's done. That shit is crazy, yeah. bro. I literally generated a song. Like I was like, um, I want a song. Of, I, I like went to chat GPT and I generated lyrics. I was like, write me a song about almost losing a fight to a 12 year old and <laughs> it generated all the lyrics plugged it into suno and it made like a yeet type song about losing a fight to a 12 yeah. year old i was like bro this is good too yeah it? yeah it was good it was yeah. good and that's what made me the most mad i was like bro what the fuck is going on but i think i do think there's something special about what we create algorithms ai they lack this thing that i mean we don't understand consciousness or any of that you know high level stuff there's no scientific description for why we're a human being like there's other animals that have conscious are aware of themselves and things like that so i don't think that's what makes us human being but we have a i, I guess i'll use the word soul just to give it something we have a soul and i think like even listening to the suno stuff like it is fundamentally good music it's fundamentally good it, it's mixed well the guy sounds like he's singing yeah it sounds good but it's just missing that thing like there's this guy for example his name is laser dim 700 i promise you you will listen to his music and absolutely hate it you'll hate it but 
his music, his flow is like stupid. Like it's like offbeat. He's not, it's like, he's not even like, it's just very reckless. Like the whole thing is very reckless and it's mixed horribly. It's like he literally records in band lab on his like Apple headphones. Like it sounds terrible, but he's popping right now. He's, he's popping. He's blowing up because people just like it and they don't know why, bro. Like, and I, it's the whole thing with the same reason I ended up liking Playboy Cardi. I heard that he was like, I heard his name a couple times and I was like, let me listen to it. And I listened to the song and I was like, why do people like this? Like, this is so stupid. Yeah. And then I listened to it again and I'm like, ah, I get it. Mm. I get it. And what I'm seeing is like, AI can replicate. It can, if you told it to make a yeet type beat, it will make you a yeet type beat. Mm. But nobody wants anything that's already been done like mm. and that's all it can do it can it's derivative it will i mean i guess all music is derivative in its own way but we as human beings think we have individual thoughts we have unique um perspectives mm. and experiences whereas an ai will literally break down the practices that were made the algorithms the techniques that were used to make this song and it will replicate it exactly identically and I think that's cool, but I think it will end up being more of a tool that we utilize to make better music mm -hmm. than AI pumping out music that hits. Because, bro, there's been AI artists already that they've mm. tried. Um, there's actually one that's, he's pretty cool. His name's Yami. Yami, uh, or it's a girl. She's like a mm. animated girl. But even Yami, the artist, it's an animated girl, but the guy the, writes the music for the AI to sing. He writes the songs, he makes the beats, mm. and then the Yami just r sings it, whatever. And that, it sounds cool. And, it's, you know, it's bubbling, it's bubbling up, it's pretty big. But I don't think it will ever be to a point where AI will be able to make music at the extent that we can. Like, think about when your favorite artist comes out with music. They mm. come out with something that you've never heard before. You've never heard anything like it. It sounds brand new. It sounds sparkly. It sounds, it hits that section of your brain that's like, dang, what is this? Mm. AI can't do that. AI can't do something unique. It's not going to make a, it's not going to make, AI is not going to make a shitty beat. It's, it's not going to make something that it will relate to what you have going on because that artist is going through something yeah, that you're going through. Exactly, exactly. And I, I think that's that's what we as human beings, as creatives do is we just kind of shed light on the experiences that we've been through. And, you know, not like not everybody has to go through some traumatic shit to, you know, mm. give off their energy, but every time you create something every time you um just express yeah anytime you're expressing yourself you're you're giving off something that nobody else has done or seen before every time you create something something only you could create nobody else could do it mm. like the rarest thing on as cheesy as it sounds the rarest thing on the planet on this entire planet is you like mm. you are one of one there's no and there never will be mm. one of you again so if we are that unique. I don't believe that something that is literally trained to just mimic us can do it at that level that we can. Like, for example, you know who Juice World is, right? Mm. After Juice World came, there was a whole bunch of people that wanted to Juice World type beats were the most popular beats in the world. Everybody mm. was buying a Juice World type beat. You will never make a Juice World song as good as Juice World because you don't feel that. You don't feel what it is he feels. Mm. Even if you have similar experiences, you're not going to express it the way he expresses it. You're not going to say it the way he says it. Mm -hmm. You just won't relate to it the way that he does because it's his creation. And the AI doesn't have that. It doesn't have a passion or a drive or an emotion to even, you know, create anything. Even when you tell it, I want a sad beat. AI doesn't know, it doesn't know what sadness is. It's mm. read a whole bunch of articles on the like technical aspect of the definition yeah. of sadness, but it doesn't feel that. It doesn't mm. know what that is. Like, and I think for AI to 
even g g have the ability to like kill, like people think AI is going to kill us and all this stuff. Like, I think there would have to be a human aspect mm. in the AI that would allow it to, it would almost have to identify itself as an individual. It would have to have some sort of consciousness for it to even be able to compete in the realm of creativity. Mm. I think we'll always have that like beat. And e even even with the AI generation, I've seen a lot of um, videos, like a lot of, you can now just have an AI create you a whole video. There's this guy I follow on Instagram. It's called, his name's Dead Tempo Visions. And he just generates these like insane, like horror landscapes. They're like, literally just see you know every horror movie has the climax scene where it shows the monster coming out whatever mm. he'll do shorts where they're like 30 seconds long and it will just be a, a whole bunch of three four second clips of like the climax of a horror movie and they're in these crazy looking landscapes and all this stuff and i did a lot of research on how he does it because i was curious i'm like how can i do something like that all he does it's prompt based it's all pr he's typing in a prompt to generate this mm. but it's not him going in there saying make a scary monster that's red that's come out of seconds. a door. Yeah. yeah, it's it's him saying, I want a scary red monster with tendrils dripping from his face, a bead of sweat coming down from his left eye, the sun peeking from the right side, and the moon setting on the left. Like every single detail in those scenes is from this guy's head. The AI can generate it for you, but the landscape, that feeling, that emotion that he's able to convey through the AI is all done through a human's thought. The AI, the AI, it can't think. If you don't tell it to make something, it can't make anything. Mm. So I don't think, like, even, even how can you tell an AI to make something that's never been made before? Like, all right, let's say with the Suno thing, you can't put names in, which I like. I kind of like that you can't do that. But even if you could, let's say they jailbreak it. And you could go in there and say, all right, I want a Kanye, generate me a Kanye West album that would be the next iteration. His last album was Vultures. Give me uh, the next iteration of Kanye West. Mm. It's going to take the last album and it's going to make that again because that's yeah. what he last made. It's not mm -hmm. going to make Kanye West is not going to release the same thing that yeah. he just released. That's not what he does. That's true. It's been a pleasure having you here, man, and, and picking your brain. And just like, I feel like you just are such a multi dimensional human being. <laughs> yes. Thank you, bro. Yeah. You too. You as well, bro. We've just been talking about all different types of stuff. <laughs> and bro. I don't know half of it got recorded or not, but um, it's been it's been amazing. And I'm, I'm glad we we're actually able to sit down and. And just connect, literally just vibe person to person. And, and then the music, you know, it's, it's just a, an add-on. Yeah, know, exactly. Like, be just like a cool thing. I, I'm just grateful to have been able to pick your brain up for. and, and Well, uh, yeah, bro. Thank you for having me, bro. This is a great opportunity. Like I said, first time I've ever done a podcast. And it's, bro, it's been a lot of fun. Dude, you killed it, honestly. Like, you, Thank you, bro. You, you killed it, bro. I, it was just natural conversation. <laughs> yeah. like. That's that's I'm, I'm glad. Uh, but uh, I guess so, uh, where can people find you and what do you have going on next? Um, so right now, you know, I'm just working on I'm working on some music. I may I'm hoping, you know, I'm hoping I have a release on this new Young Nudie album. So that's the thing to look out for the most. Hopefully I'm on this album. I've been working hard at that. But um, everywhere I'm at who the who TF is Lico, um, L-I-K-O. Uh, you can find me on YouTube, Twitch, um, Instagram discord discord is uh discord.io slash lico lounge anybody wants to join the discord mm -hmm. and uh feel free to hit me up i love talking to everybody you know it's always fun definitely cool man uh what, what so what, real quick though where did lico come from so lico uh i was down bad one day try, like this is you know you come up with your for some reason everybody comes up with their producer name before they start making music really? I, I was like i was like Sitting there, I mean, I, I had started making beats, but I was like, nah, I'm serious now, bro. I need a name. Yeah. So I was like, bro, I don't want to do Alex Beats. I don't yeah. want to do like Alex, Alex Productions. Yeah, Alex Productions, <laughs> the beat god. Like, yeah. I was like, what can I do? So I just looked up uh, how to say Alex in different letters, and Lico ended up being Alex in Latin. Oh, so that's I was just like, that's Lico. Tight. Yeah, so I just went with that. Damn, that, that is cool. I took Latin, I took two years of Latin. Yeah, I didn't pay attention at all, but somehow I passed. But. <laughs> the same with Spanish. I did the same thing. Tutorial dropping next week. If y'all know who Icy Twat is, he's a big Chicago underground artist. 
Um, I'll be breaking down how to make beats for artists like that. Right now, I'm about to just play one of the beats that I made with some of his vocals on top. Of it. All right, here we go. man dude uh, so that uh who was the artist i see twat i see twat I see twat. yeah yeah <laughs> is he uh, from uh, england or something no he's uh he's actually just uh, some dude from chicago oh sick i don't okay. know why twat is <laughs> yeah. in there but i don't know cool man well yeah so stay tuned um it's coming out on yeah it should be coming out uh next week on either wednesday or thursday hey man dude i appreciate it i appreciate it. yeah yeah thank you yes sir we'll definitely link up again soon what you doing uh this weekend 